welcome to the second video in this uh, five-parter on the four different decisions we make in chess and uh, here we're talking about automatic decision I'm Grandmaster Jakob Ogo known as Ogar if you want and I am Nikos and uh, we'll talk about automatic decisions so basically it's move you maybe have planned to make it's could be one d4 for a d4 player it could be a recapture it could be you have thought ahead and stuff like that. And generally you should not spend a lot of time on these moves you need to save time somewhere and we're going to need them later mm -hmm. in video four um so this is uh what we call automatic decisions and they're really not interesting to do as exercises you are in check take back sounds like a uh, chess from scratch volume one uh, a beginner's book so but sometimes we should just check if there are any alternatives and have you seen this position before no you haven't okay so it's black to play and uh, don't say the solution the uh, viewers should have a chance as well and if, if you want to uh, see uh, Nico's agonize you can just follow if you want to have a guess yourself you just pause the video you should have a chance here so in this position, black to play, uh, he just played what he had planned to do. Yeah, um, my if in first instinct is d2 and then bishop e2 and he lost. And uh, that was what he has planned to do. And sometimes it can be difficult when you have a plan, but you should always check your options. Have you found a better move? Not really, I wanted to play d2. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so far you huh. are doing as well as a grandmaster. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I have spotted this. So you have a better move, so this is last chance to stop the video and check for yourself. Okay, come on. What's your idea? Um, I can threaten checkmate in one, bishop e1 maybe? It's not checkmate in one, but it's a correct mm, move. Yeah, so it's a check in one. So here, actually, white has to play king h1, queen f2, bishop g2. And it's, it's all horrible because uh, queen takes f3 is threatened. I could put an arrow, but... Uh, Never mind. And the point is, of course, if knight takes in d2. It's a random chance. And uh, the thing in sports is uh, chances always come. You should be ready to, to take them. I had just written an article about this. Um, when, when this game was played, I put it up, and then this game was played like two hours later. And uh, Swapna Dupada, uh, who's, uh, who's black, is a good friend of mine. And... Uh, he was like, yeah, but sometimes it's difficult when you plan something else. And it is, because you had an automatic decision. So the thing with automatic decisions and the thing with all the four decisions is uh, there is something we always need to do when we do them, uh, when we know we approach them. And, and when you're just about to make a move automatically, that's an automatic decision. So you should have like, oh, -ho, and you should always just check anything I'm missing, any other options and if you don't see something very complicated that's there it's chess is difficult and that's fine uh, when we play a game we have to make practical decisions all the time and sometimes we need to save time but we have to see just if I play this is that a problem or do I have other options simple candidate search um, exercises where there's only one move are not interesting for, uh, for most people um, but candidate uh, exercises like these are interesting. Just spot the move. Um, there's one book I really like. Uh, I think it's it's downstairs, but it's called Imagination in Chess by Gaprinashvili. I think it's out of print. I bought once uh, 10 copies for five pounds each and just handed them out to everyone. He had some ideas about calculation and so on over six, seven pages in the book, which I didn't care for much, but uh, fantastic exercise uh, collection um, so anyway let's see if you can do this again white to play and again stop the video here and if you don't like to see Nikos think then uh, fast forward okay my my first instinct is uh, to give a check okay um, so like rook f5, king g7, and you have nothing like that? Yeah, yeah. Something, something like that. Yeah, no, you, you can play on for a long time and then it will be a draw. Yeah, or rook h7, 
Yeah, and then rook g7. And, and again, it's uh, within drawing margin. We see that the doubled a pawns are actually very useful. Mm -hmm. Much better than if the pawn was on b6. So, yes. <coughs> So yes. I'm um, starting looking at other options like g7. No. Yeah, g7 is the move. So g7. If if king takes, it is obvious. King takes, then rook h7 check. If rook takes, then rook c5, which is what happened mm -hmm. in the game. And if king f7. There are many B ways. Bishop here. g6, maybe. Bishop g6. I'm not sure about king eight. King g8. Mm -hmm. and, uh, maybe you win eventually. Yeah, the simplest might be rook g5 or something. Rook g5 here is very simple. It just wins. Also, uh, I like rook h8. Oh yeah, the same. But but, but but it it's a sort of the same ideas. Mm -hmm. So an automatic decision. It's a move you have to make or you're planning to make for some reason that you're about to make without thinking and uh, th the main reason why we missed something in chess do you know why that is i can think of many reasons yes try one um i, I don't know what, what to pick P please help me pick one <laughs> come on <laughs> how difficult can it be uh th the main reason we do miss uh, we just p the guess underestimate our opponent's uh, threats? Well, the main reason we miss something is because we don't look for it. Ah, okay. That yeah. is the most common reason. I see this with not very strong players. I, I train sometimes players who don't know en passant, don't know really castling, you know. Can you do it with the queen and rook? Well, it's been tried actually in the 2014 uh, Olympiad. Uh-huh. You know that uh, in the Olympiad, in the women's section, they have some really good arbiters at the bottom board. Because um, yes, some, 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 yes. some countries don't have so many female chess players. And you can go to Federation's website and see, um, are you a woman? Do you play chess? Do you want to go to the Olympiad? You know, just contact us. Uh, b b by the way, fun fact. Uh, do you know the new rule from 2018 that applies in castling? No. Two hands cancelling is legal. Is it legal? Yes. So you mm. you should do it with one hand. So Michal Tal, if you're out there, which you're probably not, you're now allowed to do what you did all your life, which is castling with two hands. No, actually, uh, but someone castled with queen and rook at the Tromsø Olympiad, and the arbiter uh, said to the lady, "I'm I'm sorry, uh, I'm very much in favor of uh, gender equality, but uh, castling with." With uh, rook and queen is not allowed. So we're not politically correct. I, th I think we have to say that this is a traditional game, still. Okay, so I think we've gone over automatic decisions. The way you can become better at making automatic decisions quickly is doing simple exercises that involves candidate ideas, which is simply just looking for options. Uh, finding options quickly and in most positions there won't be anything but uh, sometimes there will be and you will not miss it because you have looked. Mm -hmm.